So it's spring and uh, as you can see things are a little different. The uh, Jubilee plum is sprouting and we've taken the top off. We're doing some formative pruning because we want to shape the tree. And uh, there's a bit more going on behind us as well, which uh, we planted the rhubarb and all of the primulas came up of their own accord. So what we're going to do now, because the grass is starting to grow, we're going to mulch around the tree to support the tree. Now, the tree obviously it looks quite big and you think, well, why does the tree need help? compared to the grass, but grass has been here a long time and what's important about the grass is it shapes uh, what's going on in the soil, so it shapes the, the life in the soil and trees are further down the, the line of succession, uh, they like a particular kind of nitrogen in particular, they like to live with fungal species, whereas grasses tend to be a bit further the other way and they prefer more bacterial partners and so the grass is basically creating the, the nice kind of conditions for grass and the tree doesn't particularly find it easy to establish itself initially. Eventually when the tree gets going it'll have no problem with the grass but at this stage we want to give the tree some help by suppressing the grass around the tree. Um, so we're going to do that very simply using some cardboard and whatever you've got hold of. So for us we have, we're close to the sea and we go to the beach to walk and we pick up seaweed and we bring it back with us in large quantities and we've been mulching around all our fruit trees with this and this is the last one. So we're going to, we'll use seaweed but you might have um, wood chip or something else. Could use stones perhaps? Essentially what we need to do is to stop the cardboard from blowing away and so the cardboard is there to exclude light, allow some moisture through. Now um, this cardboard isn't particularly thick. If I was making a, a bed to grow vegetables in, put compost on top, then I would be using chunkier, thicker cardboard because I want it to last longer. Um, whereas in this case, this is really just a relatively short-term uh, strategy. So I'm quite happy with thinner cardboard. I actually want some of the moisture to get through it and to get to the roots of the tree. Um, essentially what we're doing here is the trees growing in the soil and if I was making a mulch bed, the plants are growing on top of the cardboard. Okay. So uh, we want to get rid of any tape because we certainly don't want this floating around. Uh, as you can see, we've taken most of this off already, but get rid of the, the any remaining tape. And uh, it's worth mentioning also, we talked a little bit about mycorrhizal partners before. And uh, what we did earlier was to plant this uh, allium, it's from the onion family, perennial onions you're looking for. So that includes things like chives and garlic chives and so on. I've got, um, these basically were bulbils. So some onions make flowers and then they make these little bulbils like a, like a tiny clove of garlic, if you like, on the top of the head. And then essentially it gets heavier and it falls over and it roots and it makes another plant. So you can take those bulbils, put them in the soil and they grow into more plants. And we had lots from our perennial, perennial alliums last year. So I just took a whole load of those and put them into pots in the greenhouse uh, over the winter. And they've grown, it looks a little bit scraggy because it's been hardened off. But as you can see, it's got roots and most importantly, it's been grown with mycorrhizal uh, inoculant. It's got a fungal partner. So when we're planting a bare root tree that's going to be struggling, it's good if you can plant something that already has a mycorrhizal partner that will feed it because what the allium is doing is giving it sugars and uh, that feeds the fungus, it allows it to go and do its thing and then when we put the tree in or we plant the fungus with the uh, allium and fungus with the tree is the fungus can just go straight off and find the roots of the tree. So that's the best way to do it but it requires a bit of planning obviously. So. Uh, I've just bought these here by way of example. We've already done that. So today all we need to do is to um, get our cardboard. It doesn't need to be a big bit of cardboard. We are, obviously we're going to mow around here anyway uh, to manage the grass, but we're going to cut this cardboard in half, um, put a bit of seaweed in, perhaps not all of this, just enough to weigh it down and to mulch it. Seaweed is interesting in that it, um, when it's moist, you pick it up off the beach, it's going to be quite big. But after a while, uh, after a fairly short period of time, it shrinks 
and there becomes less to it and less and then it rains and it expands again so we'll put on a bit more than you might expect uh, ultimately when the cardboard rots the seaweed will rot down as well and it will feed the tree which is what we're trying to do and at some point we'll probably have to do this again and that's absolutely fine so okay we'll get on with that uh, Jules has to remember the water so ideally let's uh, tear this in half and do half on either side Oh, it's just that kind of cardboard that doesn't want to tear in half in a straight line. So, uh, yeah, let's tear it. You might want to soak this first, but actually what we want to do is to tear it so it goes around the tree and around the allium. Um, and then we'll put some water on it, but that will help weigh it down and soften it up. It has been raining today, but it wouldn't hurt to give that a good drenching. You can see we've already been putting down some grass cuttings um, as a beginning to help. We've had quite a dry spring after a very wet winter and so we don't overlap these but actually there's a little cuckoo flower in there which is very nice so I'm going to just work around that. Okay. There we are, how about that? Mm -hmm. So this cuckoo flower is uh, an indicator of wet landscapes, landscapes that get quite moist. Um, and we noticed that since we did this original video, when we had lots of heavy rain, water actually came out of the bottom of the wall. <laughs> Uh, in like a spring and this whole lawn was quite wet and I think it was draining down into this place here because we dug a hole um, there we are okay and that's <laughs> exactly why we need to weigh it down so I'm just going to yeah, take the corners off so it doesn't stick out quite so much there we go okay if you want to start mulching that side and I'll do these corners here. Let's get a bit of seaweed on. Little washing up gloves, because the seaweed can be a bit slimy. Uh, seaweed is pretty slimy, can be slimy. And our garden then smells like the beach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay by me. Okay, do you want to swish that under your bit over there which has got... Oh yes, of course. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just tucking that under that join there to fill that in a bit. And then plenty of weight. Now And evidently you don't need to wash it first. No. Apparently <laughs> not. Salt in it is not a problem for the soil. So we're just going to keep it away from the tree itself. So a little space in there we might see a little bit of cardboard, but that doesn't really matter. When that's wet, it will be less obvious. And uh, yeah, lovely. And uh, yeah, tuck up our <laughs> cuckoo flower. Feels like we're tucking them up in bed, which we sort of are. Yeah. Yeah. We want beach stones. Some of this seaweed is utterly beautiful. 
well, the colours in here. So lovely. So, and it's as simple as that, really. Just basically suppressing the grass, giving the tree a chance to get going. Wood chip is particularly good because it often has fungus in it, and it starts. What you're wanting to do really is create a tiny little woodland around the tree, and eventually we'll be planting a few other little plants to create what's called a guild around this tree. And we started with the pollinator attractor. And there are other things that we might want to put in here like nitrogen fixers and uh, mineral accumulators and so on. But for now, the main purpose of this is to reduce the competition from the grass and to help keep the moisture in the soil to protect the tree from drying out. So now we're going to give this a really good soaking. And the water will trickle down through the seaweed and soak the cardboard. We're using a couple of cans here. Don't be stingy with the water. This is going to soak the cardboard and eventually it will break down and that's fine. And of course we'll be watering this tree as well, uh, which we can do in the centre in the meantime. But this will help keep the tree from drying out in the warm weather. And yeah, that's essentially it. We're just going to leave it, well, leave it to get on with it, but actually we'll be here every day keeping a good close eye on it. So, um, but now hopefully it should just look after itself.